Happy Sabbath, everyone. Wish you are all having a blessed Sabbath day. Hope you are all safe and protected in this uh, crisis which is going on in our planet. Now I welcome you to our lesson study. We are in the third quarter of this year. The title is Making Friends for God, the Joy of Sharing in His Mission. We are in lesson two. It's Win Some Witnesses, the Power of a Personal Testimony. Last week we dealed and we discussed about why witnessing. We learned so many facts and truths about it and how we should be a witness in public, how we should set an example of Jesus Christ to everyone in His love. If you haven't seen that video, I strongly encourage you should see that and then you come to this lesson. The memory text is taken from Acts 4.20. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this blessed Sabbath day you have given us, Lord. Lord, thank you for keeping us safe and protected. Uh, the world is suffering, Lord. Many of us, our friends are also suffering. Lord, we request you to keep us safe, protected in your, uh, in your presence of your angels, Lord, so that we could be a testimony for others, Lord. Lord, as we are going to learn about personal testimonies, use us mightily, Lord, so that through us, many can see your love and come closer to you. I pray for everyone who is watching the video, wherever they are, Lord, whenever they are watching this, you touch them, you bless them, help them to be good witnesses of you so that many will know about your love and come closer to you. Once again, I submit myself and uh, everyone who is working behind this uh, video, Lord, may you bless them abundantly. I submit uh, everything else in your feet. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The power of personal testimony is more powerful than sometimes doctrines and prophecies. We have all shared God's message, God's truth through His word to our friends, to our colleagues and to many people. But we know and we realize that many a times when we share the scriptures or share prophecies or share doctrines, there are chances that people can reject and uh, they have their opinions, they have their ideas and can go to a debate or sometimes they don't even want to believe what we share. But you have also experienced this, that when we share our testimony with others, when we share an experience which we had in our life, when we uh, share an experience where we encountered Jesus Christ in our life, they are, they are all ears most of the time. They like to listen to the story. They like to listen to what Jesus did, on, did in our life. Sometimes they won't accept our faith, but still they would like to hear it and they are encouraged to know more about it. That's the power of testimony. It's more than uh, the studying, uh, teaching of scriptures and of prophecies. Many a times, this testimonies works in different ways in different people. For sometimes it can be one-time incident in their life. Just like Paul and Zacchaeus, we know that once God interacted or encountered them and then their life whole started changing uh, upside down and they were all serving God after that. And there are times uh, when it acts in a different way. Like it will be a series of events which happen in one person's life, like one time, one incident, another time, another incident. And through many encounters, they come to know more about Lord and then being a testimony to Him. And the other time, it would be mostly the children who are born in our churches. From the childhood, they are hearing about Jesus, but they will have an experience when they study more, learn more. And through that experience, they will come to know the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of Jesus Christ. And in that experience, they will have the witness of sharing. So testimonies can work in many ways, and it's always so powerful to be shared with others. Now, the Sunday's portion is unlikely witnesses. Uh, here we are going to spend some time in the story in Mark 5. You can read it when you have time. Here we see a story where Jesus is traveling from one side of Galilee. He is going to the other side in a ship. He and his disciples, as soon as they get down there, a demon-possessed man come to Jesus. A demon-possessed man come to Jesus. And uh, we know the story. We are familiar with the story. This person, as soon as he comes to Jesus, he admits that Jesus he is the Son of God. Even though many of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the public, they didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. But this demon-possessed man, he, as soon as seeing Jesus, ran towards him and admits that this is the Son of God and he respects him and he knows that he might be destroyed now. He's, he, uh, Jesus asks him, what is your name? He says, it's legion because we are many. That means many demons were possessing this person. And he uh, says to Jesus, do not destroy us, do not kill us. You just send us to the pigs and we will go away. And uh, Jesus will do that. He will give the permission for the demons to leave the person and go to the pigs. And the pigs ran to the Galilee Sea and they die off. 
Now what happens, we know that there were around 2,000 pigs were there. When all the pigs died, the public of the town came to Jesus and was pleading him to leave the city and go back. And Jesus, as he was about to leave, the demon-possessed man, the demon has left him, he's just a man now, he's a right-minded man, that's what the scripture says, he had a sound mind now. He came to Jesus and he told, I want to be a disciple, can I come along? And Jesus said, no, wait here, your job is in this place, witness to your brethren, to your countrymen, to your town people, and Jesus leaves. Many a times, we might think so many things from the story. Why didn't Jesus take that person to his disciple? He could be a great preacher like Peter or like John, but why did not Jesus take him? We can think in, in this way. Jesus, he was rejected from this town and he was told to leave the town. But Jesus still loved the people there and he had to use someone to reach God's message to them. That's why he might have left that person to be there as a witness. Why? Because this person had a very unlike background. Everyone in the town did not like this person. He was a demon-possessed person. He's been possessed for many years. He's been shackled in chains many a times. He has broken the chain. Uh, again, uh, disturbing, sc uh, uh, screaming at night times. The parents might have warned the children, don't go to this part of the city. It's very dangerous. This madman is running around or this demon-possessed man is running around. He'll be troubling you. So he was a very hated person from the public. Now, Jesus was wise when he selected this person or when he removed the demon from this person. If this person be a witness in that town, people will change. Because when they can see that even a person who is so possessed by devil this bad can change, sometimes Jesus knew that this would change other people's heart also. If they can see the witnessing of a person who is so wrong becoming right, they also can change. So that's why Jesus might have left him there. Who, we don't know the complete story. Sometimes the people from this town, after learning about Jesus, after learning about what happened in the demon possessed life, they might have come across to hear about Jesus. We do not know. But still, Jesus knew that a witnessing in, of a changed life from a very wrong background to a right background can bring a lot of change. There are many incidents in the Bible for these kind of uh, witnesses. We know about the story of Paul, the Zacchaeus, the leper, or Nicodemus. These people, they had a very... Uh, wrong side background in front of public but once Jesus encountered their life it started to change and many started to come to know about God through these people so our lives also should be that when we are accepting Jesus Christ when we are encountering Jesus in our life it should be a change like a 180 degree you are going and then you take a U-turn we'll read two verses for that and then we'll continue Galatians 2 20 it reads like this I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. One more verse I'll read, 2 Corinthians 5.17, it read, like, it read like this, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, old things are become new. In these verses, we can understand that when we are encountering Jesus in our life, when we are accepting Jesus Christ in our life, when we are planning to take him as our personal savior, our life will change. Our life must change. The old likes which we had are going to be dislikes. The old things which we did not like, we are going to start to like. Uh, our interest in things are going to change. Jesus is not telling that you have to change as a person. He wants you as who you are. The identity, he wants to keep it like that. Your character has to be with you. But the choices which you made has to change. The interests which you had, that will change. When we are experiencing Jesus in our life, this will happen. This is, is all about unlikely witnesses. We face that many times in our society. We might be those unlikely witnesses sometimes. Sometimes we know people who are unlikely witnesses, who had a very uh, negative influencing past in their lives, but now they have changed and they've become very good and in serving God and His ministry. There are many preachers who we know about in this uh, in this kind of witnesses story we, we regularly hear about. The next portion, Monday's portion, it's about proclaiming the risen Christ. Now, we know the story what happened on the Sunday, the first day of the week, the morning after Jesus Christ was crucified. There were two ladies, they were coming to the uh, tomb. They were not scared like the disciples. They were bold, they wanted, they were so loving Jesus that they came here. Let's rewind to uh, Friday because they went 
and they saw how Jesus was laid in the tomb, where he was laid in the tomb, and they went back, they prepared spices and ointments, and they rested according to the commandment. And early in the morning, they wanted to be the first persons to be in the tomb. They wanted to uh, embalm Jesus Christ. They never expected a miracle. They never expected the tomb to be broke open. They never expected to not see Jesus' dead body. They were coming to embalm it, show their last expression of love towards their teacher. And when they reached there, let's read what they saw. Matthew 28, 5 and 6, it read like this. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. He is risen. One of the most repeated words we can say in Christianity is, He is risen. That is the exciting truth which we have in Christianity. The thing which gives us hope that we have a future res resurrection. The event which made Satan cry, we can say. The event which proves us that Jesus' sacrifice which happened on Friday is accepted by heaven because that's why he resurrected. Or we can even say this is the point where Jesus is, uh, is starting his new ministry life of the past uh, being a sacrifice is finished and now he's entering into the high priestly ministry. He's going to start his ministry as a priest in heavenly sanctuary. All these things happen on that Sunday. We are not dealing with so much about these things now. We are going to see about the woman. What happened to the woman? They saw, they heard. And now, how are they reacting? They can go back fearfully thinking that the Romans will attack them if they say this truth to anyone. Or thinking even sometimes Jesus can come as a ghost. But they, with their love towards Jesus, they wanted to share it to the next people they loved. They wanted to go to the disciples. They were running towards the disciples to share the truth. Many times when we look into testimonies, even though the testimonies are so powerful and so truth-filled, some people might not accept the truth which we have to share. They might love the testimony, but not the truth. Same thing happened here. When Mary and the other woman went and talked to the disciples, they did not believe what they had to say. Mark 16, 11 reads like this. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. Sometimes testimonies can happen like this also. Even after we share, even after we encounter Jesus and when we share it to someone else, they might not accept it. Our duty is to have the mentality of the woman. As soon as they heard it, they want to share it with someone. I'll take a small example of Paul, who had the similar experience. Paul also, as soon as he encountered Jesus, as soon as he accepted Jesus Christ as a savior, he started preaching that Jesus is Christ. From all the New Old Testament, he was teaching every Jew in Damascus about this. And then the people or the Jews of Damascus wanted to kill him and he had to run away from the place. They had to escape Paul from Damascus city. Through the city walls, they put him in a basket and with a rope, they tied him down and he went to Jerusalem. Now, when he comes to Jerusalem, again, he is being witness here. But the disciples, they were scared to believe. The story which I told now is mentioned in Acts chapter 9, verse 22. We are going to read verse 26 now. And it read like this. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. Now, the disciples always had a reason to be afraid. And when the ladies came to the disciples, they were scared of the Romans. And here, when Paul is coming to be a testimony, saying that he is a disciple, they had reasons to fear because Paul was a person who was uh, persecuting Christians. And now when he is coming, saying that he is a disciple, they might have thought that Paul is using a trick to attack them more or persecute them or to capture them into custody. So they are again in fear. So many a times when we share our testimony, sometimes people will not accept the truth uh, but they would mostly listen to the truth. Many a times this happens to our lives also. When we share testimony, they might not believe it. But the first duty of us is to share when we know it. Let not hold it back, but we run out to share God's message to everyone. The next title of Tuesday is Changed Lives Make a Difference. Now, after the resurrection is done, we are coming to the story of the Pentecost, which happens 50 days from his resurrection. We know the festival. And the power of the Holy Spirit come to the disciples. Peter started to speak and 3,000 people were baptized. And the church started to grow like anything. After a few weeks, we are going to chapter 4. 
And here we can see again more number are being baptized. Chapter 4 verse 4, Acts chapter 4 verse 4 reads like this. How be it many of them which heard the word believed and the number of the men was about 5,000. This is only about the men. So if we add the women and children, there are many who believed Jesus in this time in few weeks with the power of the Holy Spirit and with the power of the testimony with the disciples had to share. Now, knowing this, the Pharisees get scared. They arrest Paul, Peter and John and they take him into custody and they are having an inquiry and they are saying, on whose authority are you doing this? Who gave you the rights? Who gave you the papers to talk? And they are saying, you crucified Jesus and we are all doing it in his name. Now, the Pharisees, they were having a comfort in their heart when they crucified Jesus saying that, okay, it's all done with. The master is killed, so no one will speak anymore and we are safe. But here, after the disciples, they got the strength of the Holy Spirit and they started witnessing many, million, many hundreds more were getting baptized. And when the Pharisees saw the boldness of Peter and John, they were, they couldn't say anything. And we'll read one more verse, Acts 4, 13, it's read like this. And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And when the Pharisees were talking to Peter and John, they realized their boldness. They were seeing Jesus was talking in the same boldness and they did not know that the disciples also would have this gift in, with them. They knew that they are the disciples of Jesus and they are doing this in Jesus Christ's strength. Sometimes people are like that. They know that Jesus Christ's strength is with them, but they don't want to take it. They try to shut them up. They tell them not to speak anymore. And Peter and John replies here, uh, Acts 4, 19 and 20. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. They were answering to the Pharisees saying that we cannot keep silent. The things which we saw, the things which we heard, we will always speak. And that is, we are uh, obeying God and we don't have to obey you. You itself judge. If God is saying something, should we obey God or should we obey you? And the Pharisees, they knew that they couldn't do anything. They leave them off. I'll read a portion from Steps to Christ, page 78. And it reads like this. No sooner does one come to Christ than there is born in his heart a desire to make known to others what a precious friend he has found in Jesus. The saving and sanctifying truth cannot be shut up in his heart. When we experience the love of Christ in our heart, we cannot hold it to ourselves. We want to share it with someone. That's what happened to the disciples. When Peter and John, they were sharing, many, many followed Christ and they came. Thousands came. There were some, they didn't want to change. They knew that Jesus' power was working with them and they realized that it had the real truth, but uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but they did not want to join because of the fears in their, they had in their life. Might be self of thinking about what will happen to their job or um, anything can be. We also, we should have the mentality to share what we have. That's the next day's portion, Wednesday. It's about sharing our experience. It talks about the story of Paul and Agrippa, of their sharing of Paul's story with Agrippa. Now, we are going to deal with the, what he shared in Thursday's portion. Today, we are going to deal with something else. Uh, first, we'll read a verse of his sharing. That's in Acts 26, verse 16. It reads like this. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Here we can see that uh, Paul is sharing his experiences of how Jesus touched him and what Jesus said when he was selecting him to be a vessel or to be a missionary for Jesus. Many times when we share testimony, we sometimes tend to focus, we sometimes tend to change the focus in our lives uh, or giving importance to what we accomplished rather than what God has accomplished through us. Paul, when he was sharing, his focus was Christ. He was sharing that what Christ did in his life, what Christ made him achieve. He could have said about his skills which he learned when he was a scholar, but he did not do that. He was telling about what Jesus did in his life and uh, he was sharing it with, with others also. So let it, it should happen in our lives also. When we start sharing about God's love, when we are being an example, let's not try to do this to focus people's eyes on us rather than it's God. We have to realize that we are sharing God's story rather than our story. 
even though we are saying what happened in our lives, but it is the doings of Christ or doings of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that they can be a witness. Just like the title of the book, Acts of the Apostles. It's like the acts of the apostles, the work which they are doing. But it's rather more than what the Holy Spirit is doing in the apostles or through the apostles. So even though its title is Acts of the Apostles, but we can know, we, we realize that it's the Holy Spirit's acts doing or performing through the apostles to the public. That should be in our, uh, in our life also. In Paul's case, the encounter of Jesus happened once in his life and he started to serve God. Many times we also have encounters in our life of Christ, of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we take that for granted and then we join the church and uh, we, we put our trust in the experience which we had in the first time and then we just become members and we think that because of the experience which we had once in our life, we are safe or we are good to go. But it shouldn't be like that. We should always have a daily experience of Christ working in us. I'll read a verse to make it more clear. Matthew 24, verse 12 and 13. It reads like this. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, iniquity is growing like anything around us. Now, we tend to adjust. Humans always have the uh, ability to adjust and adapt and to feel okay with what we have. The same thing happened in our everyday life. When we go to school, when we go to our work, we adjust with every situation there. After experiencing the conversion in our life, we believe or we think that that once time experience which we had or the conversion which we had is enough. Now going to church is more than enough. And we see everything happening around us and we settle into that. But it shouldn't be like that. It should, have, it should be a daily conversion in our life. If we look into the time of our baptism, we can know that. Uh, that last month of baptism, we study so much scriptures, we pray a lot, we share with sometimes with someone. And uh, after the baptism, weeks pass by, days pass by, months pass by, we slowly adjust to the iniquities which is happening around us. And we all think, this is how it has to be. And then we adjust with that. But it should never be like that. We should always have an experience with Christ. We should always encounter Him in our lives. Uh, I'd really like to read a portion from Manuscript Releases, Volume 4, page 46. It reads like this, As if, if they knew something about religion once, they did not need to be converted daily. But we ought every day, every one of us to be converted. It should be a daily experience for us. In a Christian life, a graph will never grow a graph will never go straight. You know what is a graph is. It will always have ups and downs. A Christian life only have up and downs. There is no straight line in Christian life. Either you come closer to God or you go away from Him. The moment you think that this growth is enough and I'll settle for a while, I'll learn more after two years, that two years you are going away from God. It should always be coming closer to Him. It should always go up. The graph never goes straight. It will always go down only if it is not going up. So we should always have a personal testimony in our hearts and it should be a daily experience which we have with Christ. The last day's portion, the power of personal testimony. We'll come back to the story of Paul and Agrippa. As I said, he's sharing the Holy Spirit working in him through his life to Agrippa. From the beginning, how he encountered, how he started to be a minister and everything. Here we see two people of two opposites. Paul, he's been a a uh, servant for Christ and Agrippa he has been a servant of the Roman Empire. He is the successor of Herod. He is ruling Judea. Paul is a prisoner here and his, uh, uh, his decision to be whether to be killed or set to be free has to be made now. And Paul is brought to say his address to Agrippa. Now Paul is a very wise man. His uh, uh, love towards Christ makes him speak politely and he speaks to Agrippa in such a way we can start reading in Acts 26 verse 3, it reads like this, Especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. So here Paul is very humble in addressing Agrippa, saying that you are a wise man, you know the customs, you know the mistakes among the Jews. So I believe that you are going to listen to me patiently what everything I have to share. And he shares every story which happened into, our life, his, into his life. Uh, how he attacked the Christians, how he was traveling to Damascus to attack the Christians, 
God encountered him, how he lost his sight, how he gained his sight and after that how he started to work for him and it's been a long time serving Christ and traveling to different places. He's sharing everything and he could see the difference in Agrippa's face that he was, uh, that Agrippa was accepting the testimonies which Paul had to share or Ag Agrippa was realizing that, oh, it is really God's power working in Paul's life. Uh, we'll read verses 27 to 29. It read like this, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. He was about to be a Christian. That means you have talked in such a way that I was about to be a Christian. Then Paul again says, and Paul said, I would, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am except these bonds. So Paul is saying, not only you, everyone who hear me, this is my wanting that everyone has to come to Christ. Everyone has to be like me except this bond. He is uh, stating to Agrippa that I want everyone to know Christ as I know him, but I don't want them to have the condition which I am having now that is being in these bonds. Agrippa, realizing the situation of Paul, decides to set him free. And he sets him free and Paul leaves the place. The power of personal testimony is something which we cannot express through the media which we are sharing in the lesson study. It's something which we see practically in our lives. Last week we studied about the story of Joseph. And Joseph was a servant. A servant, what can he do in the house of a master? He can maximum mop the floors, take care of the cattle, do his agricultural work, do the kitchen work. In these works, Potiphar could see God working in Joseph's life. Our life of personal testimony should be very powerful. In every act, people should be able to see God's love working in us. If kings can change, if Agrippa like kings can change, people around us also can change. If we be a testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, no witnessing is as effective as personal testimony. Many times we might look at our life and say, we don't have a great testimony. We know people who have great testimonies and we would like to share their stories, but we uh, fear to share our stories. Sometimes it might be small testimonies, uh, the incidents of being faithful uh, of Sabbath in our workplace, in our college place. When we are sharing these things, also it is very powerful, but we tend sometimes not to realize it. We always say, great preachers have great testimony, we don't have. We have wonderful testimonies in our life. We do not know the power of it until we share it. I encourage everyone to take the courage, pray to God, to give you uh, opportunities to share your testimonies with others, to share your uh, testimonies with your brethren in the church. By that, many will know the love of Christ more and they will also be a witness to others also. Let us have a life of uh, witnessing in front of everyone, uh, in front of everyone, it would be an inspiration and encouragement to everyone. I would like to read one more portion and close this uh, lesson study. It's from Desire of Ages, page 8 to 6. It read like this, The wonderful love of Christ will melt and subdue hearts when the mere reiteration of doctrines would accomplish nothing. We can study prophecy, we can study doctrines, we can teach doctrines with others. But if it's just a mere reiteration, that means we are sharing without knowing, without living it in our life, it will never be effective as a testimony which we can share. If we are able to share God's love in our heart, it will melt hearts rather than just showing verses and reiterating. That means just we are just repeating the verses which we hear. But if we are able to leave that verse and then show the words to others, they would accept God and they would accept His truth also. Uh, let's close with a prayer. I, I pray that you all study more and study for the next lesson also and uh, we will study more in next week. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day you have given us, Lord. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit in the study which we had. Lord, I pray for everyone wherever they are, touching them, Lord. Please be with them. Help them to be a great testimony to others, Lord. Helping us to realize the power of testimony, Lord, the power of personal testimony. That testimony, great testimonies can come from common people like us, Lord. Lord, help us to be a witness to you and through that witnesses, they may see your love and come closer to you, Lord. Once again, I submit everything else into your faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.